Thank you. How is everyone feeling? Oh, okay, it's already recording. That was too fast. I was not expecting. Um, cool. So we are five minutes in. So let's start. Today is December eleventh, uh, two thousand seventeen, and this is the IPFS online call. As usual, like we invite everyone to add items to the agenda. Oh. If you haven't done so, please do now. Yeah. The um, link to the notes of the session, I'm going to post it here on Zoom, and you can also see it on the GitHub issue on IPFS slash PM repo. Cool. So I see we have three items today and a demo. Let's go to the first item. Uh, return with IPFS key management. Is Richard. Oh, there you go. Richard is there. I see. Richard, can, can you can you uh, use your microphone working? Can you try to speak? Uh, can you hear me, Richard? If you can hear, can you do a thumbs up? Perhaps. No. Where's Richard? All right, so uh, maybe uh, while you try to figure if you can get your microphone working, we can like go to another item in the agenda. Sounds good. Well, you. Um, cool. Okay, so let's go to the second item. IPFS cluster version 031 is out. And I'm guessing that Hector or Wyatt added this to the agenda. Yeah, I forgot to put my name. Uh, yeah, just a quick note. I released a cluster today, and there you have the links to the change log and the captain log. There's, uh, yeah, just have a look. It's just a quick note that there's like a stable release app, and it's a release that is that we are running in the gateways too, so. Sweet, any questions for Hector? What's up? Awesome, okay, so yes, definitely go check it out, the change log and the captain log to see what was the latest additions and please share feedback. Cool, so let's go to the next item on the agenda. It's IPFS Barcelona, pound two. Yes, um, so that's me. Uh, this Saturday, which is the 16th of December, we will do the, the second IPFS Barcelona meetup in a different, different place this time. Uh, if you are close by, you can obviously come and you can RSVP. Otherwise, if you are remote, we still have the IRC channel, and I am still gonna do the same as I did last time to stream everything, and would be super appreciated if you want to, to participate remotely and help answering questions for people and things like that. So if you could align your time zone with Barcelona time zone for that day, if you're in a different one, that would be very, very cool. Uh, and what we're going to do is basically hack on different things. There are a few projects that people are working with. And some people are trying to do bug fixes to the implementations we have. Or they work on their completely unrelated projects, but they feel like the, the space is, is good to be in, in general. Uh, and if you come there, there will be free food and drinks and everything. So if you will be very welcome to, to join us. If you have any questions, you can ask me now. All right. Otherwise, there is a IPFS-Barcelona channel on Freenode where you can join if you want to participate. I will put all announcements and stuff there. Uh, that's it. All right, sweet. Thank you for organizing another meetup here. Still need to get on a train to get to one. <laughs> um, cool, cool. Okay, so next item is also from you, Victor. Uh, Jenkins will have a new environment today. Right. So um, 
we had Jenkins for a while, but Jenkins ran in a kind of unstable environment and kind of shittily via Docker, where everything is, is synced on the file system, which turned out to be a terrible idea for performance. So now I've been working on a fully automatic environment, which can scale a bit better, uh, which I am going to migrate to today. So I know people had some issues during the weekend with the Go IPFS builds and some other builds. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably going to take it offline in two or one hour or something like that, and it will be offline for maybe an hour. But then after that, hopefully every, everything should run fine. So it's just a, a notice. Sounds good. Um, question from me. Um, what is the progress on migrating everything to Jenkins? I know there's a bunch of PRs. Can you can you share? Yeah, so I, I started working on all that, uh, but the performance issues kind of put uh, a step, how do you say, a, a stick in the wheels for that effort. And we also have to figure out how we can, uh, because right now all the PRs I do, I verify every single CI environment, which works fine for Circle CI. But the queue in Tav is it's a bit long, and it's going to be longer when we do more PRs. So we're going to have to talk about how we can how we can move forward with Travis specifically. Uh, otherwise, as soon as I deploy the new environment, I will continue to do more pull requests to update everything everywhere. Sounds good. So what's bugging you is because you wait for all the CIs to be green to actually merge. Um, yeah, that that is a safe thing to do. Uh, although, like, if master is green and like you don't touch the Travis config, then like you don't have to wait for Travis. It, it would be just like a profession check. But if you can like trust that changing like um, a Jenkins config doesn't affect Travis at all, it should work fine. Yeah, the, the trouble the trouble comes when there is like a minor modification to the Travis because we still haven't uh, we don't have the same Travis file everywhere which we should. Um, and then I have to wait for it to pass before merging. Got it. What about JSFFS? Like, um, is there a way to prioritize like the main repos that people use? Like JSIPFS API, JSIPFS, uh, JS multi ash which is like a, a repo that's a module that's used a lot. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't see a problem with with doing that. Uh, the reason why I started with the small repos was because it was on those tests, basically. But I uh, right after deploying the environment, I can start working from the top rather than from the bottom. Sounds good. Okay. So that's all for me. If anyone has any other question. All right. Thank you, Victor. So back again to IPFS key management. Richard, is your microphone working now? Do you think? Can yes. You hear us? Oh, awesome. Sorry, Welcome. Guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Excellent. So I've, I've been looking at um, IPS encryption. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, which is leading into um, the first thing is really key management. We keep, I think Juan said someplace in one of the PRs, you can't have uh, um, encryption without super um, key management. So um, that's what I've been looking at right now. Why are you sleeping? Uh, put up a uh, proposal for about four commands in IPS for key management, basically create, rename, update, etc. cetera. Um, I'm trying to follow the PKCS standards, if anybody's um, familiar with them. Yes? Yeah, we are. And um, right now, um, we're trying to um, encrypt all our keys at rest so nobody can break into them. And looking into what's required into libp2p crypto. We have to enhance it for PKCS support. Awesome, awesome update. So I've been following all of those PRs and 
comments on issues. Is there anything that people can like do to help you to follow this discussion? Or is there like any blocker at this moment uh, um, that you need to get solved? There's one thing that has to get solved is how to actually exchange the keys. Okay. Um, because we have to assume we're in a distributed environment where machines are not all uh, continuously online. How do we really do a key exchange? Um, I can do the crypto stuff so that only um, the intended um, recipient can read the key, but how do they get it and how do they ask for the key? So what I would do is you, can, you should make sure that they're both online. So you can, it's fine to require that they're both online for a key exchange. Um, and then you'd have to open some new um, libp2p stream or something. Um, well, I guess we can discuss this in the issue some more, but open a stream between them and then just transfer the key. Yeah, yeah, I thought of that. But I was, I was wondering if this is more of a general um, issue. Like, um, you want to be able to raise a task with somebody, with another peer and get a, re, um, get a response. So uh, I, I haven't thought about it too much. I figured they can use sneaker net right now. <laughs> right, they can definitely use sneaker net right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think, I think you pro we probably can add in, like this doesn't need to be happen soon, but we can just add in a open, Open the connection to the per to the peer. Send the file. They say that encrypt it, and call yeah, it good. yeah. I I just thought um, I raised it because um, you it, it's not urgent. There are workarounds, but I I think it it's sort of um, pointing towards a bigger issue on how two peers can um, exchange information directly. Uh, what do you mean? Well, isn't there a need for two peers to talk to each other directly and exchange information, such as right? There, there, and so yeah, you calendars. can. You can easily do that. Um, you just like literally call you know host new stream with a peer ID, and it'll give you a connection directly to them. Okay, I, can, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so on the on the IPFS node object, there's the host thing, uh, which is like the interface to all the network stuff. And on that, if you just call dot new stream, and you give it the, the ID of the peer you want to talk to and the protocol name you want to talk to them on, it will give you a new stream uh, that they'll cool. then receive with a given handler. I'll, I'll look into it. I yeah. haven't mm -hmm. been in that side yet. Cool. Yeah. Um, if I may shame in like, so from the, the comment, the issues that you have created sure, and from what I could understand. So like what IPFS offers today by default is that like communications between peers are encrypted uh, always and authenticated. What IPFS doesn't do by default or doesn't even offer a uh, primitive for that is encrypt the content and then send the content to specific peers so that they are the only ones that can decrypt that content. So that will be like encryption of the content at rest. Um, and that is like what is missing for, I think, your use case. But maybe I don't understand it fully. Um, so yeah, let's perhaps like follow this on the, the issue, like on your IPFS encryption repo and, and make sure that we are uh, targeting what is the real need here and that we don't repeat something that's already there. Agree 100%. Review is always excellent. Awesome. Um, the, the other issue I have is, as you're aware, David, is that there's going to be some crypto work that's required in um, Live P2P crypto. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just concerned it's, it's a lot to work. And right now I'm using a package I'm not too happy with, Node Forge, neither are you. Uh, yeah. but at least it gives me the primitives I need to, um, to do things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like to go forward so I can get the key management and the encryption done 
using this package, which is only referenced in the keychain library, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and then go and um, look at um, libp2p crypto and move everything in there that we need. Uh, absolutely. And, and so NodeForge is an amazing package because it does a wolf one of the first of its kind, it has a lot of crypto primitives. The main issue with NodeForge, it was like built using AMD. So uh, it's not using CommonJS nor ECMAScript uh, 6 modules, which makes it really hard to import slash require into a Node.js or browser project today. No, Essentially, no it, it's working now. Um, I, I have it up I'm running in a browser. Uh, I mean... Agar test. So yeah, yeah, but like it brings a, a truckload of code with it yeah, as well. Like, yeah, I, I agree. It, it's a big code package, but so is crypto. <laughs> true, and true. But like ideally what we should target is just like extract the pieces, like the function calls that you actually I know, need. I know, but that's gonna take me weeks. Okay, I'm not sure if that's the case, but, but maybe we can evaluate then. I know that the NodeForge team also wanted to modularize the NodeForge package. Yeah. And, and there's other packages out there too that, that we can take a look at. Um, yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm not a big fan of NodeForge. It's just, it's doing what I need. Absolutely. Right now. Yeah. We, we used it in the past, like the first version, the first six months or eight months of just IPFS, we used it. And then essentially we phased it out because it was such a huge beast to carry with us at all times. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let, let's like identify exactly what we need. Like, let's make sure that we understand if it takes weeks or maybe a couple of days, just like to refactor the code that we need. Uh, or also chat with the NodeForge team to see if they are interested in like modularizing the the module right now. Um, I, I've reached out uh, um, to them on um, well, at least one question right now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, technical um, crypto question. And no reply after a week. Don't know okay. what that means. Yeah, maybe. Which doesn't sound good for the project team. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure about the state of the project. Well, let's figure out. Maybe it's not not meeting anymore. Maybe like they are just busy. Maybe they prefer to be contacted through email or some other medium. Let's figure that out. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, like, let, let's make sure to like follow on all of these through issues. Um, and, and yeah, like, thank you for bringing this up and for pushing for it. Um, no worry. Thank you. So let's go back to Jen. Oh, is there any other question on key management or any other comments that you want to make? Okay, I don't see any hands. All right, I'll continue. So let's go into demos. So that is, this one is from Lytle, a quick update on IPFS Companion. I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, so uh, it's a very quick update. <laughs> I just I just like it's the first update after Firefox uh, 57, Firefox Quantum. And I guess I'll just uh, maybe uh, share my screen quickly. And so just go over uh, those talking points I want to. <laughs> Go over, um, yeah, just quickly move this. Yeah, so um, IPFS Companion uh, is doing well. Uh, we have uh, went all, uh, and uh, got that accepted at the Mozilla store. Uh, we've also had the uh, first uh, feedback from Mozilla team, uh, first uh, serious feedback after web extensions became the default and legacy extension uh, stopped working in Firefox. Uh, the first, uh, well, maybe I'll just uh, show this is like our uh, extension in uh, Mozilla store and we've got somewhere between 500 and 600. Uh, it varies, but uh, usually we've got like quite a nice user base and uh, if we look at the statistics, it's uh, slowly growing. Uh, we can usually see when there's like a talk 
or maybe a meetup <laughs> where someone uh, uh, presents IPFS. There's usually a lot of downloads in one day. And most of our users is on latest Firefox, uh, all the platforms. Uh, uh, this, uh, well, like those stats are uh, kind of uh, junky sometimes, but give us uh, good feedback uh, about the direction we are going to. And uh, there's a beta channel. Uh, when we usually uh, publish a new version uh, every week or maybe more often if there's like a change that we want to smoke test. Uh, this can be installed uh, instead of uh, the stable version and you can switch between uh, uh, beta and uh, release versions uh, if you find that the beta version is uh, not uh, up to par. <laughs> with quality or, some, or if you experience uh, some kind of a bug, you would just report it and switch to the uh, standard one until we fix it. And uh, what we've uh, created, I think, since my last demo is uh, the translation project. Uh, um, we've got uh, some interesting uh, translations, uh, usually nearly 100%. And uh, if anyone uh, finds that uh, uh, his or her native language is missing, or maybe you want to uh, pr uh, go over all the already existing translations and uh, approve them. There's like a special role uh, of uh, language maintainer on this uh, crowd crowding tool we are using. And uh, just uh, let me know, send me email or uh, create a ticket on GitHub. Uh, that you want to maintain a language, and that way you will have like uh, more uh, more rights. Uh, you could uh, uh, select which translation is better if there are multiple competing ones and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, um, going uh, back to the list, uh, the most important uh, uh, thing that we addressed uh, was. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Yeah, the most important issue with others uh, in recent weeks were reprodu reproducible builds uh, or deterministic builds. Uh, what it means is that Mozilla asked us to uh, provide source code and instructions on how to build exactly the same browser bundle uh, that we are packaging and publishing to the uh, store. Uh, we had some issues with uh, browserified uh, uh, dependencies such, la uh, such like uh, JS IPFS API and, uh, and others. So we uh, switched to, uh, switch to uh, browserifying entire uh, extension thanks to uh, great help from Oli. And uh, so far, we've uh, released a version uh, using this new build pipeline. And so far, so good. Uh, seems that Mozilla is pleased. So uh, this one is uh, kind of uh, another uh, good development here. And the most exciting thing that I wanted to talk today is that uh, Oli and Alan uh, are, mm, I don't think they are present on this call, but they will probably present this uh, at some point in future. I just want to tease you a little bit. Uh, they are working on uh, integration uh, with Brave Browser. Uh, what we want to do is to reuse IPFS companion code base. We've got like a lot of uh, boilerplate and uh, background code that can be uh, very useful and is reused uh, in other browsers, even in browsers that do not uh, support uh, the web extension uh, APIs. In, to the same extent that uh, Firefox and Chrome are supporting them right now. And uh, as you can see, uh, it runs, the current version runs, uh, but that's not uh, not all. What we are planning to do, Ola is working in 
uh, in a work in progress uh, pull requests. Uh, what we want to do is to leverage uh, the more uh, liberal uh, uh, security model of Brave uh, browser, and uh, we want to uh, let uh, Brave browser users to run uh, JS IPFS embedded in the browser. So what we want to do is to provide a switch that lets users to select if they want to run the old version, which, I, which is like external uh, daemon, so usually go IPFS, or if user wants to run embedded uh, pure JavaScript uh, node uh, within the browser, and there will be like uh, probably uh, some kind of a nice UI for that. Uh, I'm not sure if we, we got a screenshot for that, maybe we not. There is a GIF in one of the PRs, so yeah, yeah that yeah, one. Yeah, exactly, that's one I'm hunting for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly that one, if you scroll down, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, maybe this one, yeah. So there, that's the plan, we'll probably have a, like this switch. Uh, the great thing is that we agreed that we want to maintain a single code base and we want to reuse uh, uh, as much as we can. And the Brave specific or let's say Firefox specific code will be uh, in a module or maybe it will be up, uh, behind a checkbox uh, or maybe it will be automatically hidden or shown on the specific browser that enables us to provide additional functionality. Uh, this embedded f feature will be under Brave, but I think this is a great uh, demonstration for, let's say, we, when we talk with Mozilla at some point. Uh, it's a great illustration of what we want to do in a mainstream browser, and it's a great proof of concept. And if someone wants to, to, to run it in the browser natively, they can just install Bra Brave. It's not ready yet, uh, it's just a teaser, but uh, it's the direction we are working uh, towards and uh, there will be much coming soon, right? And I hope uh, we'll have another de demo, probably Ola or Alan will, uh, uh, will show you something uh, when it's uh, fully baked. So uh, I think that's all. I just wanted to update you that the IPFS uh, companion is, uh, uh, is gaining some speed and we'll have uh, a separate initiative to uh, like create an access between web UI, IPFS companion and IPFS station. What we want to is to provide uh, like a si single uh, visual language. So all three look will look like the same, uh, the same application or maybe uh, like parts from the same ecosystem and we will hope to provide a tighter integration between them so there will be features I imagine in web UI that you will uh, open from within station or IPFS companion those things will happen in in following quarters I think so uh, just uh, keep looking at the IPFS companion I guess This is awesome. Thank you so much for the demo. So much cool stuff. So much cool work. Uh, and Lido is being humble there. Like there's a lot of stuff that like are in PR, so you have to stitch things together, but they, they actually work pretty well. And you can like switch between both nodes and like enable certain features, drag and drop files into the extension and have them shared. Uh, it's really cool. And like, as Lido said, if you install IPFS station and the extension is really nice, so I like one running and the other, like editing the other one and like connecting and like seeing IPFS all over the place um, with nice UIs. Cool. So I saw one hand at least from Richard, but I like it was in full screen, so maybe there's more hands. Um, let's start with Richard. I think you have a question. And yes. then I really great tool. Like it a lot. Cool. Um, Question is, do I have to keep on updating it all the time, or can it just update itself? Oh, it updates uh, itself. If you install it from the, uh, if you are using Firefox or if you, if you are using Chrome, 
uh, you just install it and it automatically will uh, update when the latest uh, version is uh, okay because i'm running chrome and it seems to be just running a copy that's about a week or so old yeah yeah so uh, what we do in chrome is that there is no like a developer channel so if you are using chrome you will always have the uh, the release version which is the most stable and polished and under firefox you have a, like a, a possibility to to choose between a release version and the developer beta version so developer and beta versions will uh, update more frequently but uh, at some point when we will stabilize uh, when it will be stable enough uh, there will be a full release uh, to the chrome store also so just be patient <laughs> i guess so use firefox <laughs> or use firefox yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheers all right thank you any other questions comments ideas high fives Oh, okay. Okay. Is it okay? <laughs> Lots of IFRs, Lido, Ollie, and Alan, which could not attend today. Um, Lots of really great work. Thank you so much for the update. So, uh, is there a hand now, Peter? Is that a yeah, hand yeah hand? no, it was a, was a question. I saw the, the switch in uh, IPFS Companion when they switch between the, the gateway and the embedded node. Does the embedded node mean that the node is embedded in the page? Or does that just mean that it's a JSIPFS node running in Brave? Yeah, that, uh, that's like uh, the browser extension has uh, something called a background page. And it's like a hidden page that you can run uh, JavaScript on and it's always running when your browser is running. Yeah. Uh, and in Brave, uh, our goal is to run JS IPFS node uh, in that page. So that yeah. will mean. So my, my, my question is more about if the node is being exposed to the page rather than where the node is being run. Because embedded, no, no. Like, like MetaMask is embedding Web3, for example, in the pages as a content script and for the window object. That is not what is happening now. Uh, no, no, that's a separate thing. Uh, yeah. This uh, background page is uh, in different namespace. It's like a separate sandbox. Uh, it uh, does not have direct access to your pages. Uh, there are APIs uh, that let you uh, to introdu introduce communication between background pages and uh, scripts in uh, your tabs. But that's not something uh, we will introduce, at least not initially. Uh, we need some kind of access control if you want to expose local nodes to the uh, to the JavaScript running in tabs. That's like a separate separate discussion. And I think we'll, until we've got like some uh, token-based uh, 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 authorization, um, we probably won't risk exposing it. Or maybe we'll expose only read-only API. That's a separate issue, right? All right, um, there are no more hands. So I guess this is it. We reached the end of the meeting. Take, oh, there's a hand.